What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Love Goes Season 1, Episode 8. And so we um, are picking up with... They're in the kitchen and they're making soul rolls. And what it looks like is that this is something that Coolio and Mimi do in their household where they took the idea of an egg roll. But instead of filling it with your traditional egg roll type fillings, you know, the cabbage and that kind of stuff, you pretty much put whatever you want to put in it. But... And it looks like they cook it like they cook a like a they would cook a um, egg roll, and so Sunday and um, Althea and um, I think Tasha Bo's wife, they were making them, and Sunday was having a hard time folding it. And here's the thing: Coolio was being a typical man, in my opinion, and I mean this is no knock on men. But when I say a typical man, I'm talking about, you know, I know that there are always exceptions to the rules, so don't get mad when I say that. But what I mean by typical is his thing was, I showed you how to do it. You got it. And if you don't have it, then, okay, well, let me show you something else to do or let me do it, you know. Whereas Mimi was trying to actually, like, was, like, walking it through with her and showing her how to fold it. So Coolio was kind of talking over her, and then Mimi got frustrated, and Mimi was like, this is what he always does. He talks over me, he be, he diminishes me, he belittles me, da 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 And it turned into this really big argument between them. Now, I'm on the outside looking in, so I can't speak to what Coolio does on a regular basis to make Mimi feel this way, but in that moment, I don't feel like what Coolio did was that bad. But again, I also understand that this isn't a one-time thing, what... Mimi was saying was, this is what he does. This is our every day. And it's always an argument. And it's ev this is every day. This is what happens with us every day. So the exercise for this particular activity is that they were going to, what they call it? Some kind of therapy. I'm going to say smash therapy, honey. But basically, and we've seen, you know, where you go and you can smash the things up. And what Spirit was saying was, um... As you're smashed, every time you swing that back to smash something, I want you to speak on a memory. I want you to let out what it is that you are smashing, what you are getting rid of, what are you letting go of. And so um, I think it was a good activity for all of them. I think all of them had a moment where they could smash and let go. Now, the first thing I want to say is this. Who the hell customized Julio's hat? Who gave him a hard hat with two holes in the side that let them damn sorry-ass ponytails out? Coolio, let it go. Everybody else has had to let it go. We all know that you 50 years old. We know that, you know, for men, the older they get, we know hairlines recede. We know you no longer can do what you used to do. When you were in your 20s, the whole braided, crazy-looking hair thing, I get it that that's your gimmick. I get it that that's your stick. But people, at a certain point, you all have to let it go. Coolio, let them ponytails go, please. I beg you. If you don't get nothing else from this ep from this show, let the ponytails go. And was it really necessary for you to drill a hole through your hard hat to let the ponytails out? Anyway, as we continue to move on, um, Teresa went first. Teresa's her name. Teresa went first. And, of course, she spoke on um, finding her voice and speaking on what happened to her and, and molestation and what happens and what, what, what happened to her growing up. When Bo went, I'm going out of order, but I'm just going to go through it because I'm not, you know, it was great, but yeah. Bo, um, he spoke on, you know, being a crack baby and having parents addicted to drugs and things like that. And he was releasing that anger of, of his circumstance. Um, I thought Q was interesting because Q was smashing and he was talking about comedy clubs that wouldn't hire him and take a chance on him. And he also smashed, um, he smashed something um, in, um, for Spinderella, talking about for the girls who, basically talking about salt and pepper, honey, that, that disrespected and did what they did to her. Um, and real, let me pause on that real quick. Somebody put in my comments about Spinderella, why did she ever assume that her and Salt were friends? They were always co-workers. And they weren't. And I think that's what people forget or people not understand when they hear Spinderella's side of the story. They weren't always just co-workers. Understand, they took Spinderella under their wing, under 
Spinderella was still in high school when she started touring with Salt and Pepper. She was a child, and she was she was never on their level equal footing. They were always a big sister type relationship to her. But please don't diminish the thirty years that Spinderella and Salt and Pepper spent together, and diminish it to where they ended up. They ended up as a co-worker situation because of years of different things that they went through. But that's not where they started off. And it wasn't always like that. There was a sisterhood there. They were friends. There is a loss that I think both sides feel. I think both. I don't believe for a minute that Pepper and Salt don't miss their friendship with Spinderella. But the problem is the, the friendship and the business, it, it collided. And Spin was on the outside of it, looking in. But I don't want... I, this is my opinion. Well, no, some of it's fact. Um, Spinderella wasn't always just a co-worker. So anyway. Um, and of course, Spinderella, she smashed about the things like that. Um, <clears throat> Mimi... The, um, Coolio smashed about the criminal justice system and the LAPD and, and things of that nature. Was, I found it interesting because he really didn't smash anything in reference to his relationship with um, um, with Mimi. It was all about what, you know, his experience. And we know that he was saying about his son being in jail. And we know he grew up in, in LA. So I'm sure he's definitely had his more than, more than enough run-ins with the LAPD. Um, Q... Uh, I already talked about Q. I'm sorry. Um, Sunday's uh, man. Um, he smashed on, you know, the, being a fatherless child and, and that kind of thing. Um, we know Sunday spoke um, and she smashed on um, her molestation experience. And she had a total breakdown, which was good because she was letting it out. Sunday keeps so much in. And that's what Spirit said. Spirit said, let it go. And when people tried to, like, you know, like, try to hug her and stuff she said uh-uh give her a minute let her stand in it let let her release it let her stand in it let it out and i can respect that because that's what she needs to do that's what she needed to do let it out release it let it out um i'm trying to save the more emotional ones so benzi so althea hers was all about benzino child now she said about her baby father and how he treated her and and diminishing her and disrespecting her. And she spoke on that as well as, um, she said, and her family. Um, so she spoke on that. Benzino, of course, made it all about Althea. Whatever. I told y'all I'm not, I just can't get him a whole lot more of my energy. Last week, y'all made me defend Benzino. And then y'all know how I feel about defending people I don't want to defend. But I got to be fair in my, in how I see things. Then we had, um, we had Mimi. Now, Mimi's whole thing that she was smashing, hers was all about Benzino. I mean, not Benzino, about Coolio. Um, and Coolio was sitting there like, damn, all her smashing is about me? Like, it, 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 he was like, I ain't think we've been together long enough for me to do all this damage. And I think he said it sort of joking, but I think he was serious, like, how? How is it all about me? Like, how am I the only person? Like, she was molested. I mean, he didn't say this. I'm saying this. She was molested by her grandfather. Like, she had a whole lot of other shit. Why is this all about me? And on one hand, in the moment, I was actually like, yeah, why is it all about, about him? But then I thought about it. Hell, that's what you're here for. It's love goals. You are on the show to see if y'all can work through y'all's problems to see if y'all can make this relationship work. So, uh, from that side, I kind of understand why Mimi was like, I'm focusing here on you. Um, I think that's everybody. Let me make sure, because I don't want to make sure, I don't want to miss nobody. We got to hit that, that boot box. All right, I, we got everybody, child. We got everybody. So, later on, we see where Spirit brought in, um, Sunday's mom. The thing I'm really liking about this show is that they aren't just leaving it about the, re excuse me, the relationships. They are really digging deep and understanding why, if you act this way, it's because of this. So, if you're... If you have your guard up and you feeling guarded and you feel like you can't trust men and it's because you were molested as a child, well, okay, let's not just speak on it. Let's explore that. Let's really dig deep into it. And so I can appreciate that that's what Sunday is doing. I mean, what Spirit is doing. So she brought Sunday's mom on. Now, Sunday loves her mother, you know, so that's clear. But she spoke with um, Sunday's mom and she said, you know, she said, 
around 14, you know, her daughter started to become very, um, very rebellious. And she said she didn't understand why, she didn't know why. And it did cause a lot of, like, it was years and years of that rebellious, that fighting back, that, you know, that anger. And so they spoke on, she, she said, well, you know, your daughter, she holds some um, anger towards you because she feels like you should have known what happened to her. And, you know, her mother was like, I did not know. She said, I never, she said, I knew something was wrong with my child. That's why I put her in therapy. But I didn't know that's what it was. Like, I would never ignore something like that happening to my child. So then they brought Sunday in. And as soon as Sunday saw her mother, she was happy. It was genuine that she was happy to see her mother. But she immediately saw her mother had been crying. And then she, I think she sort of kind of got protective of her mom. Like, whoa, what y'all doing in here that y'all got my mama crying? But what I think is important that came out of that relationship was, or well, that conversation, I should say, was Sunday's mindset is my mom is very smart. My mama got 20 degrees. She's very credentialed. I'd be interested to know. I, what her, I feel like her mother was an educator or is an educator. But anyway, she said, and I just don't understand why my mother didn't know. And what Spirit was able to explain to Sunday, and I hope Sunday really did receive it. I feel like in the moment she did. Um... She said, no matter what your, no matter how educated your mother is, no matter how many degrees your mother has, she didn't have a degree in child psychology. She didn't have a degree in childhood trauma. So there were signs that even although now in hindsight, maybe she should have seen it or not, not should have seen it. Maybe you feel like she should have seen it, but in reality, she didn't know that's what the sign was. Like she knew you were angry, so she put you in therapy, but she didn't necessarily connect Oh, my daughter started acting out at this age and I saw this happen and I saw that happen and she became more promiscuous and she became this and she became that. Like, not everybody knows to make those connections and she didn't. The, but the reality is the fact that your mother still, and we know in the black community, people ain't quick to put their kids in therapy. The fact that your mother put you in therapy and said, but my child needs help. I thought that spoke volumes. So, um, I think they had a good session. I think it was a really good session. And then they left there and they had a chance to sit down and talk to the boyfriend. And he said to the mom, he said, you know, Sunday seems to feel like the Mother's Day when I came to the volleyball game, I overstepped my boundaries. And the mom was like, really? She said, I thought we had a good time. We had a good conversation. We, And he said, yes. He said, but where me and Sunday were in that moment in our relationship, she felt that I overstepped. And so I just want to apologize to you. And so they had a good moment and they were able to, and it seems like he, it seems like she likes him. Like I didn't sense any attitude from her. I didn't sense any, you know, mm, mm, you know, I didn't sense none of that. And so it was, I feel like, and y'all know I ain't been Sunday's biggest fan child, but I really feel like that was a, a breakthrough moment for Sunday in her healing and in her um, processing. I really, really do y'all. I really do. Spirit brought in um, a life coach for Benzino. Child, I ain't entertaining that. He was teaching him how to breathe and shit. And she, he, and this is what I was with him until, and this is why I said Benzino be doing too much. The guy asked Benzino, do you deal with a lot of stress? Benzino said, in this house? Yeah, I sure have. And if I can deal with the stress here, then I can take that out into the world. Benzino, you have owned businesses that have ended you have been in other relationships that haven't been healthy hell you got shot leaving your mama's funeral you clearly have other stress in your life that don't have nothing to do with Althea and don't have nothing to do with that what's going on on that show but everything you got to bring it back here and play victim and be woe is me just say you know what yes I got a lot of stress in my life and I don't always have the best way of dealing with it if you can help me with that that'd be great so they did that child then um Coolio had a one-on-one -on -one with Spirit. And listen, I'm going to say this. And I, I, listen, I don't have nobody's degree. I am nobody's uh, relationship therapist, counselor. Uh, but what I am going to say is maybe y'all need to let that go. Maybe that relationship is just not meant to be. Um, Coolio is not willing to change. And anybody who's been in a relationship knows that everybody's got to change. Everybody's got to adjust. Everybody's got to work on something. If you love me, and that doesn't mean you have to stop being who you authentically are. But there are different things that you do in a relationship to adjust to someone else. And something that Spirit said was, because Coolio was like, I know I heard her in the past, but I thought that we had moved past that. And something that Spirit said was, 
you can't put new trauma on top of old trauma and, and not process through it. And so I feel like she forgave you. Obviously, y'all got back together. But forgiving somebody for infidelity and totally 100% getting to a place where we were back where we were, it takes time and it takes work. And one thing that I thought Mimi said that I thought was very interesting, Mimi said, you can treat me like a princess all day long. So that tells me that when things are good with them, they are good. She said, but when you, but that doesn't mean anything if you keep doing the same thing you've always done. So if you keep cheating on me, if you keep talking to me crazy, how are we ever going to get past where we are? And I think that's very valid. And Coolio's thing was, I don't know what to do. I'm not going to stop being who I am. I'm not going to change being who I am. This is me. Take me take me as I am. Love me or leave me. It is what it is. And so my thing is, when somebody tells you who they are, believe them. If, if Coolio is saying, this is who I am and I have no intention of changing, I have no intention of doing anything different, then you have to, you, you have to respect what he's telling you and you have to make a decision what's best for you. And I feel like the decision in, the, in that situation was best for you, Mimi, is to move on and find somebody else because either you're going to keep dealing with the behavior that you're not comfortable with or y'all going to keep doing what y'all are doing, which is arguing, fighting. And so... Yeah, if he ain't willing to change and you can't live with him the way he is, then y'all need to just make, you know, shake hands and let's just kiss and say goodbye, okay? Um, last but not least, we saw Sunday's boyfriend having a really deep conversation with Bo, and then um, Teresa ended up coming over. And basically, he said, you know, she completes me. When I wake up in the morning, I'm happy to see her. I love her. I know this is who I want to be with, and I'm ready. And at first, it sounded like he was saying... That he was ready to make their relationship official. Like, no more this open relationship. No more this you dating somebody and I'm dating somebody. I love you. You love me. I want us to be together. Then it seemed like while he was talking to them, that evolved into getting married. And Bo was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, though. Like, hold up. Like, you went from I want to be committed to I want to marry her. And he was like, yeah, man. He's like, I'm very goal-oriented. When I decide what I want, then that's it. Like, I go from zero to 100. He said, my only hesitation, though, is her not returning that, her not feeling the same way I feel. And she might be ready for the title of girlfriend, but I don't know if she's ready for the title of wife. And I do think y'all need to take baby steps. I think y'all need to start with girlfriend and work your way up to wife. And that's what Teresa was telling him. She was like, listen, that's a very serious commitment. You got to make sure that you mean it and make sure that you're ready because you can't play games. Like, everything is cool while we're here. It's... It's great that we're working through what we're working through, but you have to really mean what you're saying. He was like, no, I mean it. Like, I'm ready to marry her. I'm ready to give her a ring. I'm ready to put a ring on her finger. And I feel like in that moment, he was caught up, and I do think he needs to start with girlfriend. Y'all ain't even calling yourself boyfriend and girlfriend yet. You still got two women back in L.A. that you need to have a serious conversation with. How you gonna get on one knee and propose to this woman that you ain't even broke up with them two women yet? Like, I think you forgetting you got some baggage that you ain't finished unpacking back here. Here. Now, Sunday done told you, calling them women to tell them you ain't coming home no more. You said you wanted to have a face-to-face -face and they deserved it, which I agree they do. Then that's what you need to do, in my opinion, you need to take care of that before you start getting on one knee and deciding you're going to propose to some folks. But, okay. Anyway, that's how it was. That's what it was. That's how it ended. Let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.